Welcome to episode number four on this series on evolution. And this episode is going to be our second in the series that deals with the details of his mechanism of evolution called natural selection. And in this one, we're going to look at the four main parts of his theory. And first, we're going to start off with the struggle for existence. Now, Darwin noted that living things would have very high birth rates, and they also have limited resources, which means there's going to be competition because there's not enough resources for every single offspring who was born to survive and create its new offspring. So the limited resources are going to be competed for by the surviving offspring. Now, this is a concept that is straight up Thomas Malthus. Remember, Thomas Malthus said that uh, if there's continually this increase in human population, there's not going to be a re enough resources to support all these individuals. And Darwin was keen enough to notice that if this applies to human beings who have the ability to manipulate their environment to help them survive, then it's definitely going to come into play in the natural world when they don't have enough ability to manipulate the environment. So some are going to survive, some are not, because there's competition for limited resources. The second one is survival of the fittest. And you can't have survival of the fittest unless there's that competition with that struggle to survive. So when we mean um, survival of the fittest, we're really talking about those with the best adaptations survive and reproduce. Now, I really want you to pay attention to these two things in green right here. These are two vocabulary words that you have to master when it comes to understanding evolution. The first one is fitness. Fitness is the ability to survive and reproduce. You need to be able to pass your genes on to the next generation to truly be fit in a biological sense. Now, an adaptation, and this is an inherited characteristic. So in other words, it's a gene and a phenotype. So a genotype and a phenotype that increases fitness. In other words, you have something genetically that makes it easier for you to survive and reproduce. Now, I want to skip down here to where it says in purple. What's the relationship between adaptations and fitness? And I want you to make a note of this, that you want to study and have this memorized, okay? Adaptations always increase fitness. If it's not an adaptation, then it doesn't increase fitness, all right? So adaptations always increase your fitness. In other words, it always increases your ability to survive and reproduce. Now, adaptations can be put into three categories. Number one, they could be anatomical or structural. In other words, maybe you have stronger muscles that make you a little faster so that you could get away from predators or you can actually catch your prey a little bit better. It could be that you have better eyesight, which allows you to see your prey. Therefore, you're going to catch more food. Okay. It could be uh, simply like, think of like peacocks. Uh, if you have bigger and brighter feathers, that's going to allow you to get more mates. That's going to increase your fitness. And that would be an anatomical or structural benefit. Okay. Physiological. The, when we talk about physiology, we're talking about the chemical processes that allow living things to stay alive. And so think of like an adaptation that's physiological. Think of like bacteria that are antibiotic resistant. They have certain chemi chemical attributes to them that allows them to defeat these antibiotics. So when you think of like MRSA or uh, 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 pneumonia that is resistant to penicillin, they have a physiological adaptation that allows them to be essentially immune or resistant to the antibiotic. And thirdly, we have behavioral, all right? Maybe we have a predator who has a mutation or a change in its genes that gives them a slightly different hunting behavior. So like maybe it has the ability to stalk a little bit better or it has figured out that if it um, has the ability to figure out which way the wind is going therefore it could stay downwind and not upwind so that the prey can't smell them that would be behavioral we also see these in the mating rituals of 
of birds and other animals is that if, say, for example, the peacock that we just mentioned, if it has the ability to, say, shake its feathers a little bit different, maybe that could attract a mate, and that would also increase its fitness. So remember, APB, anatomical, physiological, and behavioral. Oh. Or behavioral. Adaptations can be APB, anatomical, physiological, and behavioral. All right, this is a very important slide. Make sure you, you study this section of your notes over and over again because this is the key concepts when it comes to evolution. You need to have this stuff mastered and put into your memory. All right, descent with modification. Now, descent simply means that you are a descendant or you are the offspring of some individual. And modification means that you have changed in some form. All right, so remember, descent simply means that you're the offspring. You know, you're descended from your parents. And modification simply means change. So think of it this way. Nature supplies pressure in a way that your offspring have to be slightly modified to be able to handle the, the new environment. And essentially, that's natural selection in a nutshell. All right, so natural selection over time will produce organisms that have different structures. Remember that anatomical. Um, occupy different niches. A niche is dis defined as the role of that organism in an ecosystem. We're going to cover this more when we get to ecology. And a habitat is the place at where they live. So in other words, an individual or a population that is adapted to its environment has special structures that allow them to exploit a special niche and therefore allow them to live into the habitat. So think of a habitat that's like the address of the organism and think of a niche is like the job of the organism, all right? And you have to have special skills and ability to get the job which will allow you to live in that address. That's kind of how a niche works in a nutshell in a real simple form. All right, now, the descent part implies that all organisms are related to each other because they've inherited the adaptations. So the idea is, is that you can trace every single living thing through a family line, potentially down to the very first prokaryotic cell that evolved. But we're going to talk about that later in another screencast and also in another series on evolution where we look at the details of how all that happened. Okay, number four, and this is the last one on our list of the parts of natural selection. This is called common descent, and I made a hint to it on the previous slide when we were talking about how you inherit your characteristics or adaptation from your parents, which are obviously your ancestors. So common descent basically implies that there is a tree of life because all species arose from a common ancestor. Now, I want you to pay attention over here to this picture. This is called a phylogenic tree. Phylogenic trees trace the relationship through a genetically, um, uh, genetically related group of animals, right? So these are all mammals. Mammals have fur, they produce their own milk, and most of them give birth to live young. But as you can see here, we're going to have examples. So having fur and producing their milk, that is um, a definition of a mammal. All right. So this line right here, this represents a common ancestor. Okay. Whatever that organism would be. I mean, obviously the first mammal. Now, the first group of mammals to diverge off of this line are the monotremes. And this guy here is a platypus. These are the egg layers. So a monotreme is an egg layer. The next group to diverge away from the common ancestor are your marsupials. These are the pouched animals. They give birth to live uh, babies, but then they crawl up and, and live in a pouch until they're kind of mature to take off on their own. Okay, the next group of mammals that took off are all related to each other. See how they come off of the same branch? This would be the bats, rhinos, and wolves. Another branch that was kind of similar are the pigs and the whales. So what this implies is, is that whales and pigs are pretty closely genetically related. And we have some evidence to back that up. 
The same with this group right here, reasonably genetically related so that they fit on the same branch. Now notice that the, the mouse or the rat is closest to the humans. Well, that's because a mouse and a human, they have 85% the exact same DNA. Let me write same over here. All right? So we're essentially pretty genetically related to the, uh, to the rat. Now, it does tell you the power that 15% difference in, in DNA can create, create greatly different species. I mean, humans have their own special characteristics, and the rats have their own. All right, so basically we're creating a tree of life, is that all living things are related to each other. And the biggest piece of evidence is that, is that there are big chunks of the genome from a human and a platypus that are very similar because at some point we had the same common ancestor. So let's review, okay? The four major parts of natural selection are one, the struggle for existence. More babies are born than can survive, therefore there's gonna be competition. And that comes straight from Thomas Malthus. Number two, that leads to survival of the fittest. Fitness is described or defined as your ability to survive and reproduce. Adaptations can either be anatomical, uh, physiological, or behavioral. Remember APB. And adaptations always improve your fitness. Now, descent with modification and the fourth one, common descent, kind of go hand in hand. Uh, each generation of offspring should have or hopefully has modifications that increases fitness for that population and that will allow that population to evolve and change and carry on. Common descent states that all living things are related to each other in some form or fashion through a common ancestor. Common descent allows us to make these phylogenetic trees which can also be called a cladogram and this creates the tree of life. Okay we have one more episode to go in this series so until the next time, I'm going to catch you on that flip side.